Yo, what's good as you go peek out here in Singapore? It is three something. I don't know. Yeah. It's about three o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Today is Friday. And I wanted to come on here because there's been something on my mind. So I don't often get the chance to go out and enjoy myself as an adult. I am a mom. It is my responsibility to be mom. It is my responsibility to be with my daughter, to watch child-appropriate material, to speak child-appropriate material, to listen to child-appropriate material. And for the first time in a very long time, I got the chance to leave the kid at home with my mom and dad and go out and be an adult with our other adults. And it was kind of cool. And I was actually really excited to be able to get to see new people, get to know new people, network. You know what I do. I, I love to network. But in the course of that, a couple of things popped up in conversation. Conversation, observation, whatever you want to call it. But I noticed a couple of things and I thought I needed to speak on it. So even though I've had a couple of drinks, I've been out to the club, I got home really late. I am quite sober, I think. And I need to speak on it something that I think is very, very pertinent. If you don't already know, I have a couple of clients who are married. And their relationships, the two that I'm actually dealing with, two of the few that I'm dealing with are dealing with infidelities, old infidelities. Uh, one of them just was brought to light. The other one they found out about several years ago, but they're still having trouble trying to reconcile and find the new normal and kind of get back to, to a new place with their spouse. And as much as I hate the fact that they're suffering through this, I know it's very, very important because the kinds of emotions that pop up when you deal with infidelity aren't simple emotions. They bring into question everything that is who you are, who you were, what you thought was real, all of your beliefs on what the relationship was based and built on, all that gets called into question because that one lie, that one indiscretion, it doesn't matter if it was repeated several times, it's one, the fact that they decided to go elsewhere for what they needed changes what the other spouse feels all over. And I know it, I know it, I've been there, I've lived through that, okay? Okay. So I understand. But I also know that for them to want to step out, they were lacking something with you. And that it's the hardest part of my job to figure out how to let you know that you also need to look at yourself. Because you can't control the other person. You can't control the other person. The best you can do is encourage the other person or provide a space where the other person can feel comfortable enough to tell you what they were missing in the first place. If they can even name it, they've got to figure that out too, right? They've got to think about that. So once they can name what it is that they were missing, you've got to figure out why it was that you weren't providing or weren't able to provide whatever it was that they were looking for. Maybe they never said anything. Maybe you didn't notice. It could be anything, right? But for me to point the finger at you, where you feel you are the victim, it is the hardest thing in the world to do and for you to accept. But it's necessary because it's not all on the other person. Yes, they chose to step out, but why? And that why is a very painful, prickly question. And I know, I know very well. But I also know from my own experience that if I, because I did, if I treat my husband like he is my child, he will resent me. If I control everything about him, he will resent me because a man needs to feel like a man, like he is capable of providing, like he can be the hero if he needed to be. He can step in and save you if he needs to. He needs that. He needs that. Why? Because it's an every piece of literature all over the world that this is what a man is supposed to be. They're not supposed to cry. They're not supposed to show any emotion. They're supposed to be there to lift this and build that and save you. That's pretty much it. But really, that's not all of it. But I want to propose something to you so you can consider the role of a spouse. If I were to tell you there was a man once upon a time who got upset with his wife for the things that she did. And it wasn't just any big thing. It was little things. 
This man would suggest that his wife go and get her hair cut a specific way, in a specific haircut at a specific place at a specific time. And if she didn't do that, he would be upset. What would your immediate response to that story be? Would you immediately tighten up and go into like anger mode, like you want to beat the hell out of him? Or would you want to know more? Because for me, if you were to tell me that, I'd get angry instantly. I wouldn't ask any more questions. I'd be like, what the fuck? Are you serious? They're trying to control her? What? No. But what if I told you that it wasn't the man trying to control the woman. It was the woman trying to control the man. Would you still be up in arms and angry and ready to riot? Would you? I'm asking. Because today, that's what I saw. That's what I noticed. That's what I... That's what caught my eye. And I've been thinking about it. I've been monitoring the situation since. And it wasn't just that this one person had been asking and asking and asking for a specific thing to be done of her spouse. And because it didn't happen in the time frame that she asked, and then when he tried to surprise her, it didn't happen where she wanted it to happen, with whom she wanted it to happen, the way she wanted it to happen, she held a grudge for most of the night. Sure, she seemed to laugh and throw her head back and enjoy herself with the people that were around her, but I was there to the very end, and I saw how this person got in trouble at the end of the night for not having done what she said when she said how she said it. And I felt terrible. I felt terrible for her and I felt terrible for him. You see, I know for a fact that he was un- unfaithful. And I know for a fact that she's dumbfounded over it. And while she wants to mend the relationship, her actions are not showing that she wants to mend the relationship. It's showing that she wants to break it every chance she gets because this is how she reacts to everything. From my smallest corner of the world, the role of a spouse is not to be your father, is not to be your mother. It's not to be your big sister or your little sister, is not to be your child. The role of your spouse is to walk with you through life, to bear witness to all that you do, to encourage you when you feel low, to calm you down when you feel angry, to walk with you. And walking with someone means you allow them to be, you allow them to be an adult, to make decisions like they've always made decisions before they met you. The ability to feel like they are responsible enough to take care of their own life. Not feel like they're tied to you and tethered to you in a subservient manner. And I wish people would understand this, which is why I got on here tonight. It's not easy. And it depends on what kind of examples you had in your life. Maybe you have a lot of strong women in your life. Maybe you have a lot of very, very strong men in your life. I don't know what your situation is. But for me, because I've been subservient in my marriage before, because I've witnessed my mom and dad have the kind of dynamic that showed me that the man was the head of the house and the women did not question anything, they just did what they were told, I know what rings true and strong for my spirit is to find a man that will walk beside me, not in front of me, not behind me, not above me, not dragging me, nothing beside me. I know that I want the kind of relationship where it's kind of like a tug of war. Sometimes you pull and I come along and sometimes I pull and you come along. But there is a balance there. I know the minute that I feel like I need to take care of you like you're my child, I'm not going to be attracted to you physically 
or sexually. You would tire me out mentally. I would be frustrated and disgusted. Why would I want to lay with you ever? And I know on the flip side that if someone feels the need to mother me or father me and treat me like I'm a child, I'm not going to be attracted to you. Why would I want to lay with you? You make me feel small. But for some reason, people don't get it. They don't see that. They're real quick to point the finger. But the minute you pull that mirror in front of them, they're like, oh, what are you talking about? Oh, you, you know what? I'm not, I'm tired of telling people telling me that I need to change. Well, guess what, baby? People behave a certain way in front of you because of what you allow them to be. If there was once a very, very strong man that stood before a woman and the woman decided that, you know what, oh, I want to take care of him when he's sick and when he's feeble, he's not feeling so well. And from there, they begin to baby him the rest of the way. He will no longer feel like he's capable of taking care of himself. He will forever question whether he can or can't take care of himself. He will question himself. And that's not fair. So ladies, gents, whoever you are out there, when you look at your spouse, please remember they are your equal. They are meant to walk beside you. You are not their mother. You are not their father. It is not your your job to raise these people. You chose that person, I hope, because they amplify who you are and you amplify who they are. Control comes from a place of fear. And control, whether you know it or not, is limited to you, your thoughts, your ver- your words, and your actions. That's it. You cannot control anything else. If you do control it, it's only for a time because they're allowing you co- to control them. And at some point, they will grow to resent you. Relationships between humans is a delicate thing. There are a lot of emotions that come into, that come into play. And if you are not careful, if you do not respect the other person for all that they have come, accomplished and been through before they met you, you stand a really good chance of ruining what relationship you have. And please, I am not condoning infidelity by any means. It is wrong. In my opinion, what you should have done before you step out is tell the person what is wrong and what you're missing. Give them a chance to fix it. And if they can't fix it, you break up with them. If it is one of those things that you will not compromise on. Your emotions are real. They play a big, big part in your life, in all of your relationships, the one-to-one relationships. And when I say relationship, it doesn't mean you're dating that person. No, a relationship is where you speak to someone over and over again over an extended period of time. That is a relationship. So when you see the same bus driver every day at the same time every day, that is a relationship. If you go to the same store to buy the same food every week, at least once a week, that is a relationship. And if you can't speak your mind in those relationships, then you're being fake somewhere. And that's not good either. So please, whether you're married or not, whether you're dating or not, Respect the other person in the relationship. Respect the fact that they have a past, that they've grown a little bit at least. They've been through some things. You are meant to amplify the people around you, not diminish their light. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't make you a bigger person 
for you to control the next person. That comes from a place of fear and that is not a good thing. Please, please. Treat the people around you like they're human. Adult humans if they are adults. And remember, you really can't control anything but what you say, what you think, and what you do. You cannot control how you feel. That is a gut reaction. But what happens after that feeling, that you can control. I hope this helps you guys. It's really important that I get this message out. I love you. Good night.